What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast, of course, coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com and, of course, hosted by yours truly, Tony Mango. My target to review for this edition is going to be the latest entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe series, Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's, I think, the 20th movie that they've done, or 21st, or whatever the case may be. And, man, we've seen two fantastic movies In the MCU so far this year with Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War. Did they keep it up? Did it fall short? Let's see what the case may be. So, the way that this normally works here, I do my hits and my misses of the movie. Talk about the things that I liked, the things I didn't like, anything else in between that comes to my mind. And I will always start things off with a spoiler-free review. Just in case anybody wants to know whether or not you should see it or skip it with a general idea of the whole movie. And then after that, we'll get into more of the uh, spoiler territory and a little bit more details and anything else that's coming to mind that I, you know, want to warn you about and everything else like that. So, starting off with the spoiler-free section. Do I like the movie? Yes, I do. Yes, I would recommend checking it out. No, do I endorse it as much as Black Panther and Infinity War. Uh, It's just a different animal. You know, it's the type of thing where that... Well, those, I should say, that's the proper grammar. Those two movies were actually much more serious. They had a lot more gravitas to them, a lot more weight. Uh, Things matter more a little bit. This is a comedy, so, you know, when you go into a comedy, you expect to laugh, and you expect to have fun, but you also don't expect it to be some kind of, like, moving, grandiose-type film, so keep that in mind, but it delivers on what it promises that it's going to do. It makes you laugh, it's got some fun ride along the way kind of moments, and it's an overall quite enjoyable movie. I do think it falls short in some ways, and I don't think that this is going to be one of the movies that I rewatch over and over again. I've been able to rewatch the original Ant-Man a bunch of different times by now, and I could pop one, something like uh, the first Iron Man, or I can pop on Civil War and just kind of watch it like pretty much at any time. This one, I don't know if I'd really be able to watch too, too often. Uh... I liked pretty much every part about it that I should have liked. Some other parts fell a little bit, you know, short of expectations and stuff. And I'll get into that with the spoiler section. But overall, it's a see it. And I recommend that you check it out, especially if you are, I mean, at this point, if you're into the MCU, you're going to watch the movie no matter what. Let's face it, you know. So if you're an outsider... You don't quite get a lot of the references, I'm sure, at this point, and you have 19 movies to catch up on, but I still think that you should check it out. Now, going forward, there will be spoilers. So warning, if you have not seen the movie yet and you don't want to know what happens, bookmark this, go watch the movie and come back and check it out later. Continue on if you don't care about being spoiled. Spoiled. Why do I always say that? Spoiled. Spoiled. And, uh, you know, whatever. Just wanted to warn everybody. So... Let's start breaking down some of the specific hits and misses of the movie. Uh, It has a similar tone as what the first one had. So the tone is the thumbs up in my mind because it's something a little bit different from what we've seen in some of the other movies. You know, uh, Ant-Man is not Black Panther. Ant-Man is not, say, even like Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's more of a comedy kind of a thing. They all have their different feel to it. You know, Captain America movies feel like political thriller kind of, you know, more serious kind of tone. And then Thor Ragnarok was kind of crazy and stuff like that. So if you like the tone, then that's a thumbs up. Paul Rudd, of course, knocks it out of the park. He does exactly what he was supposed to do. His character is one of the best characters of the movie, which is really good because a lot of movies, it turns out that the supporting characters are much better. Not necessarily the case. However, some of the supporting characters really get a chance to shine here. Michael Douglas is fine. He is, uh, you know, no real complaints about him. Uh, Cassie, I thought, was really a standout this time around. The little girl that plays her, she could be a really damn good actress in the future. I mean, she's a good actress as she is right now for what she's been given. And if she continues to grow and she continues to learn and, you know, her skill level goes up, she could be a, you know, potential Oscar winner, I think, at some point. Not to say that this is going to win her an Oscar, you know. Don't go like a little bit too crazy here, but she just sold me. 
and she had a lot of charisma to her, and I really think that she was, she knocked it out of the park here. Uh, Evangeline Lilly for uh, Hope, she's pretty kick-ass, liked her a lot, I'm sure that so many little girls that see this movie are going to be looking at the Wasp and being like, you know, that's my hero and stuff like that, which that's always good to hear because as much as I bitch and complain about people forcing narratives of movies and trying to get a little bit too political, I think that this is the best way to do it. She simply was a hero and it's a character from the comics. It's somebody that, you know, we've gotten to know from the previous movie and different things like that. She got a chance to show that she's a badass and you accomplish what you're looking to get out of being a good role model for little kids without having to shoehorn anything in there. That means so much more. It's got so much more weight when you do something like that, like the Dora Milaje in uh, Black Panther. I feel like they were more useful than the Amazonians in uh, Wonder Woman, for instance. So. On that side of things, big fan of Hope. Jimmy Woo was great. You know, a lot of comedic spots there. Randall Park uh, is not somebody I'm the, the most familiar with. I don't watch the show that he's on, but he did a good job. Uh, I never really knew too, too much about the character from the comics, but I did know that the character existed. And I thought originally that he was going to be part of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I thought Jimmy Woo, I thought uh, Clay Quartermain, which they still haven't done quarter me, I don't think. Kind of interesting. Having him as an FBI agent instead of a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, yeah, you know, rinse and repeat kind of thing. We don't have S.H.I.E.L.D. I do think that S.H.I.E.L.D. needs to return, but that's getting into some future stuff. I really liked that they brought Bill Foster into the mix here, and even though that the whole idea with him working with Ghost was totally transparent as hell, I mean, it was like, come on, I, I've seen movies, and I know that this is going to go where it's going to go, I'm glad that they undercut it by revealing it super early. Just don't make me wait until the three quarter mark to be like, uh oh, he's actually working with. Now, just do it early on and just, you know, get it out of the way. I also like that he wasn't all that bad of a guy. Like, you know, he's, he put his foot down. He said, you don't hurt the little girl. Like, you've hurt people, different things like that. He just wanted to save her. And that's it. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see him get big, but they did say that he had done that in the past. So Goliath, you know, was Goliath. Uh, so that's another hit for the most part. Lawrence Fishburne, I think a, a lot of people could have played that part. I don't think that he really, you know, did something that was like, so like, wow, oh my God, amazing. Uh, you know, it, it's just, I liked Lawrence Fis uh, Fishburne in it. But I could have done with anybody else. You know, it's nothing really all that special. Big fan of how Paxton and Maggie were supportive in this. That was a major hit for me. I didn't want to hear another speech about how Scott's not being a good dad and all this other kind of stuff like that. That would have been a major miss. You've already said all that you needed to say in the previous movie. This time around, they're more supportive. And I really, really liked that. I thought that that was a nice change of pace. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer really didn't have too much to do, but I really enjoyed seeing her again for some reason. I can't quite tell exactly what it was because, uh, you know, she was only in a couple of scenes and what she did was really nothing like, you know, uh, world shattering dramatic performance or anything like that. It's just something about having her in the movie. I just, I really liked it. I don't know. So she's a hit for me too. I guess you can make a joke. I'd still hit it after Catwoman and all that. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember the last movie that I've seen her in. So that maybe that was a big factor in it too. Just haven't seen Michelle Pfeiffer in a while. And I like Michelle Pfeiffer. Gotta love Luis. He's a hit. I don't know if I'd really say the same for Dave and Kurt, uh, T.I. and David Desmalchin. Um, did, well, Desmalchin, he did what he needed to do with that one scene about the uh, I forget what he called the ghost or something like that. Like that was fine. Ti, no man. Like it's just he didn't ser serve any kind of a purpose really at all. Uh, and for the most part, if the small chin wasn't there, his character, you know, they, they didn't really, really, really need it. Uh, Luis was really like he, he's almost a one man show. 
the jokes were funny. That's a hit. Uh, I like the use of the powers for the action. Um, you know, the action scenes, they were innovative and interesting. So I like that. It's another hit. Ghost was more compelling than I would have imagined making the character. And I'm glad that Ghost ended up being in this film instead of an Iron Man film. Because Ghost originally is an Iron Man villain. And if you were to have asked me 10 years ago when the MCU was brand new that we would see Ghost in an Ant-Man sequel, <laughs> I would have been like, this is fucking ridiculous. First off, he's an Ant-Man villain and he's a he and like all this other kind of stuff like that. But I think that this was another example of when they take a character that isn't really all that specific, I guess you could say. And, you know, it's not like you're moving Magneto from uh, the Holocaust and in the X-Men films and making him a random character in, like, a Wonder Man movie. And you're not doing that. Magneto is an X-Men character, and that's what it is. Ghost isn't somebody inherently tied to Tony Stark in a way that you can't manipulate a little bit. And since the character is kind of an unknown character and different things like that, you can play around with it. So I like the idea that they did stuff like that here. Uh, you know, I had thought before that ghost might pop up in an Iron Man movie and make it some kind of industrial sabotage thing. But in my mind, the second Iron Man film should have included Spy Master as well as Madame Mask and Whiplash should have been a little bit different like that. And they could have done some kind of a thing with like Spy Master is hired by Madame Mask to try to infiltrate Stark Enterprises. And, uh, hey, you know, we're getting into different territory here other than an Ant-Man review, but maybe I'll write something up about that. Speaking of which, Egghead is in the movie. I didn't recognize even during the movie that Elias Starr was Egghead's name. You know, Egghead is not a character that is like the Joker where actually, you know, I couldn't even say that because the Joker doesn't have a real name, but you know what I mean? Like if you say Mac Gargan, I know you're talking about Scorpion. If you say Eddie Brock, I know you're talking about Venom. If you talk about, uh, you know, like any of the characters that are kind of along those lines where you know the actual characters' names, Edward Nigma, I know that it's Riddler, whatever that, you know. But if you say Elias Star, I don't fucking know that that's Egghead. So that's neat. I like it even better now. Uh, you know, that, that took me until after the movie. So speaking of which, uh, on top of that, the next film needs to include Eric O'Grady, right? And doesn't he need to be Black Ant, kind of? Because by now we've gotten... Ant-Man, Hank Pym, Ant-Man, Scott Lang, Yellow Jacket, Goliath, Giant Man, both the Hope and the Janet versions of the Wasp. I would think that Eric would need to pop up and Black Ant would need to be necessarily the case. Uh, I don't, I'm not too, too familiar with Black Ant to be like, you know, that that's like a, you know, they should do this type of storyline or you know, anything like that, but I do know that that's another villain, and they do like to do similar kind of things, so Black Ant strikes me as the next way to go. Uh, maybe Eric steals the suit, and they do, uh, I don't know, something or whatever like that, <laughs> but uh, I do think that that's maybe where we go in the future. Actually, maybe Beetle is next, because Beetle hasn't been done yet, and Beetle has like different powers and stuff like that that is like suit based and you know they can play off that a little bit i don't know i wouldn't have thought ghost so i'm very interested to see what happens in what what the hell would they even call the third one ant-man you can't call it ant-man and the wasp too so huh i don't know for that matter though i gotta say uh not a hit not a miss just meh was the evil generic businessman trope character that Walton Goggins played. I like Walton Goggins. He's better than that. This was kind of flat, and I didn't really like that all that much. I did like the run about the whole truth serum thing, but the character in general, just kind of blah. None of the ant stuff for me was really all that fun this time around, and in particular, the big ant playing on the drums, that might have been a funny moment if it hadn't have been ruined by the trailers, because we had seen that before. So at that point, I'm sitting there waiting for the end credit sequence and I'm going, well, they probably are going to do the stupid ant thing because they haven't done that in the movie yet. Really disappointed in that. The mid credit scene seems to be getting some kind of flack. People are like calling it controversial. 
how is it controversial? You knew that Thanos was going to be above this in some fashion, and you know, uh, people needed to fade away. I would have thought that it would have been kind of funny if it was just uh, Janet that faded away, but maybe you know, if uh, Hank did, and the other um, Hope and Janet would have been around, or something like that. But I trust Marvel that they know what they're doing because, for the most part, they know what they're doing. Overall, the movie is a hit in my mind. It's not anywhere close to Black Panther and Infinity War. It's just on the lower end, and I haven't quite decided where it's going to fall on my definitive ranking list on Fanboys, but I'll try to figure that out pretty soon, and you'll be able to see where I put it. I'm going to probably lean it towards the bottom half at some point, Uh, because, I mean, at this point, we've had 20 movies, so if it's my number... I don't know, my number 11 or something like that. It's still like, I mean, I like all these movies. There's not one of these movies that I don't like. Uh, Thor The Dark World is my least favorite. This certainly is not as bad as Thor The Dark World. But uh, even Thor The Dark World, I've seen a bunch of different times. So keep that in mind. Uh, As much as I don't seem super duper crazy uh, enthusiastic about this, it still was good enough. And... I'm disappointed that we're not going to get another Marvel movie at the end through the rest of the year because it's already, you know, just July and, you know, I kind of want another one. <laughs> but um, maybe even though this wasn't the best note to go out on with two much stronger movies beforehand, we're going into Captain Marvel and then we're going into Infinity War uh, Part 2 or whatever they're going to call it. So, hey, I'm still really fucking pumped. So thumbs up hit not the biggest hit in the world but still a hit i recommend going and you know checking it out so when you do check it out make sure you drop a comment below and tell me what you think about the movie whether you agree or you disagree whatever you want to talk about we'll uh we'll figure it out so drop a comment on the youtube part or if you were listening to this on itunes and stitcher or you know whatever elsewhere like that then you can go ahead and leave a comment on the page on fanboysanonymous.com itself Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Also subscribe to that YouTube channel and ring the bell for notifications. If you want to help support Fanboys Anonymous for the future to help me grow this and get it back to like a previous status that it was before, if not, you know, I'll help a lot more. There are two monetary ways that you can help if you got the spare change. You can either buy some merch over on our Tee Public or Redbubble shops, or you can just hit up the Patreon and, you know, kind of... Uh, you know, toss a couple bucks that way. You know, dollar helps, five bucks helps, ten bucks helps. It sounds ridiculous, but it really, it really actually does, especially with YouTube and, you know, that fucking mess. Um, if you follow the pro wrestling side of things, smartcatmoment.com is where you're going to find all my stuff there. As far as other stuff on Fanboys, I have been watching Glow and I've been, you know, kind of reviewing ep- each episode little bit by little bit on that. I'll probably be trying to check out the first Purge sometime soon, uh, so I'll probably put up something about that. Maybe I won't do an actual review point of it. Maybe I'll do, like, a Making the Grade, because I haven't done that in a while. Or maybe the next time you guys are going to be hearing from me is going to be Mission Impossible Fallout or Teen Titans Go to the Movies. I don't know. We'll see. So check out all that stuff when it comes up. Thanks for your support, everybody, and I will see you next time. It's time for me to geek out. Adios.